Let's take a look at clones. Please note that this tutorial was created on an iPad Pro using Animation Pro version 1. Your screens may look a little different. As I was writing Animation Pro, I thought it would be nice if figures could have shadows that automatically animate. And then I thought, why not reflections as well? Finally it occurred to me that I should simply develop clones and let animators configure them to do all of that and a whole lot more. So here I have a single frame containing just one figure. Cloning the figure is really easy. All I need to do is press the plus button at the top of the screen to open the add menu. And then I press the button labelled clone of the selected figure. Animation Pro automatically creates an exact clone of the figure. I'll just move it to one side so that we can see both figures at the same time. You can tell a clone from a normal figure by its anchor point. Clones have blue anchor points. Because this is a full clone of the original, or parent, figure, everything that I do to that figure is also done to the clone. In fact, if I select the clone and then open the figure inspector, you'll see that all but a handful of the transform options are greyed out. Because the clone is replicating all of the figure's properties, the only things that I can change are its position, its rotation, its z-order, and whether it is flipped or not. So if there's a property of the parent figure that you don't want to clone, then you need to explicitly turn cloning off for that property. Say for example, I don't want the clone to copy the parent figure's scale. I can do that by selecting the Clone tab in the Figure Inspector and turning off the Scale option. If I go back to the Transform tab, you can now see that the Scale dial is no longer disabled. So I can now scale the clone. Furthermore, if I select and then scale the parent figure, the clone no longer scales as well. OK, so let's take a look at the Clone tab in the Figure Inspector. This tab will only be available when a clone is selected, so I'll select the clone again. There are a lot of parent figure properties that may be cloned or not. Use your finger to drag the list up and down. You'll see that some of the options, such as movement, have reversing options. I'll quickly demonstrate what that means. Right now, if I move the parent figure, the clone moves in exactly the same way. If I reverse the X direction, however, when I move the parent figure to the left, the clone will move in the reverse direction to the right, and vice versa. Now you may have noticed that there's a small blue button at the top of the clone panel. If I press that, a number of clone options are displayed. These allow me to quickly turn all of the clone options on, turn all of the clone options off, convert the currently selected clone into a regular figure, and lastly, there was an option to open the shadow wizard. But before I take a look at that option, I'd like to talk a little bit about shadows. Firstly, in Animation Pro, your figures and scenes are two-dimensional. So figures really can't cast a shadow. But you can simulate shadows by cloning a figure and then flipping, rotating, scaling, shearing, tinting and blurring that clone in just the right way. Now if that sounds a little complicated, it is. So Animation Pro includes a shadow wizard to make that a whole lot easier for you. First, select the figure that you'd like to add the shadow to. Press the plus button at the top of the screen to open the Add menu. And then select Shadow to the selected figure. Animation Pro will open the Shadow Wizard. Here you can drag a little blue sun around the wizard to set up the angle, size and the direction of the shadow. At the bottom of the wizard, you can use two dials to set the opacity of the shadow and how blurred it should be. And when you're done, press the green tick button to add the shadow into your frame. Finally, drag the shadow into the desired position. And that's it. We now have a realistic looking shadow that animates as the parent figure changes. Now you may notice that as I move the parent figure's arm, there's a small lag before the shadow updates. That's because the clone representing the shadow needs to be adjusted, tinted and blurred each time a movement is made. Animation Pro, however, does perform these operations in a background thread, so you may continue to animate whilst it does that. Alright, 
So I'll now select the shadow, go back to the clone panel and open the clone options again. If I select open shadow wizard, I can update the existing shadow to say set a new angle. The important thing to note here is that opening the shadow wizard this way doesn't reset the clone's tint settings. So you can use this feature for other purposes, such as creating reflections. I'll now quickly demonstrate. I'll start by selecting the figure. I'll then open the add menu and create a new clone. Now I'll go to the clone tab, open the clone options and start the shadow wizard. I want the reflection to appear in the water beneath the figure, so I'll move the sun directly above the figure. I'll then make the clone a little more translucent, give it a little blur, and then I'll press the tick button. And finally, to remove a clone, tap on its anchor point, open the remove menu at the top of the screen, and select figure slash clone. I hope you found that as informative as I did. Thanks for watching.